Well, hello, brothers and sisters. I wanted to share with you uh, today from my reading in John Owen and his work on the mortification of sin in believers. And this is found in volume six of his works. And the particular part I want to read to you is where in chapter 11, he's dealing with the issue of the conscience and dealing with the the guilt of conscience and so on. At the beginning of the chapter, he talks about the vital role of the law, uh, that we use the laws, we should use the moral law for this uh, in the work of mortification. But this specific paragraph I want to read uh, is where he talks about bringing our lust to the gospel. And not specifically that we might find um, forgiveness, but in this context, that we might find further conviction of its guilt. Of course, we should bring our lust to the cross and to the gospel for our, its cleansing daily. But we should also, as Owen says here, bring it for further conviction of its guilt so that we might feel and do this work of mortification, not just wanting forgiveness, but wanting cleansing, wanting a new heart, wanting victory over sin, and so on. So let me just read this paragraph uh, to you now. Bring thy lust to the gospel, not for relief, but for farther conviction of its guilt. Look on him whom thou hast pierced, and be in bitterness. Say to thy soul, what have I done? What love, what mercy, what blood, what grace have I despised and trampled on? Is this the return I make to the Father for his love, to the Son for his blood, to the Holy Ghost for his grace? Do I thus requite the Lord? Have I defiled the heart that Christ died to wash? that the blessed Spirit hath chosen to dwell in? And can I keep myself out of the dust? What can I say to the dear Lord Jesus? How shall I hold up my head with any boldness before him? Do I account communion with him of so little value that for this vile lust's sake I have scarce left him any room in my heart? How shall I escape if I neglect so great salvation? In the meantime, what shall I say to the Lord? Love, mercy, grace, goodness, peace, joy, consolation? I have despised them all, and esteemed them as a thing of naught, that I might harbour a lust in my heart. Have I obtained a view of God's fatherly countenance, that I might Behold his face and provoke him to his face. Was my soul washed that room might be made for new defilements? Shall I endeavour to disappoint the end of the death of Christ? Shall I daily grieve that spirit whereby I am sealed to the day of redemption? Entertain thy conscience daily with this treaty. See if it can stand before this aggravation of its guilt. If this make it not sink in some measure and melt, I fear thy case is dangerous. End quote. Well, convicting words indeed. And we pray that God would enable us to have a conscience that is dealt with by the cross. That we're not just seeking, that I, that you, are not just seeking forgiveness to go to heaven, but seeking that the will of God, the, the very purpose for which Christ was sent into the world, that our hearts might be cleansed, that we might know the power of the cross to deliver us from sin, and that we might bring our conscience bring our guilt, bring our lust to the gospel, to the very gospel that is to deliver us, not just from the condemnation of our guilt, but from the very root, the very 
the very sin that offends the God who calls us to holiness and calls us to live a life worthy of the gospel. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. I have another section of John Owen that I would like to uh, share with you. It is from his, again, his sixth volume, and it's the uh, treatment of the subject of temptation. In the particular part I would like to, to read is from page 119 and 120 of uh, that volume, and it's particularly with reference to the types of temptations and that we find in, in the ministry, um, I suppose the Christian life in general, sort of spiritual pride and, and so on. And let me let me just read it uh, to you. And um, I trust it will be a, a challenge to you as it, it is and, uh, to me. So Owen writes uh, these words. In particular, a man begins to be in repute for piety, wisdom, learning or the like. He is spoken of much to that purpose. His heart is tickled to hear of it and his pride and ambition affected with it. If this man now with all his strength ply the things from whence his repute and esteem and glory amongst men do spring, with a secret eye to have it increased, he is entering into temptation, which, if he take not heed, will quickly render him a slave of lust. So was it with Jehu. He perceived that his repute for zeal began to grow abroad, and he got honour by it. Jonadab comes in his way, a good and holy man, now thinks Jehu I have an opportunity to grow in honour for my zeal. So he calls Jonadab to him, and uh, to work he goes most seriously. The things he did were good in themselves, but he was entered into temptation and served his lust in all that he did. So it is with many scholars. They find themselves esteemed and favoured for their learning. This takes hold of the pride and ambition of their hearts. Hence they set themselves to study with all diligence day and night, a thing good in itself, but they do it that they might satisfy the thoughts and words of men, wherein they delight. And so in all they do, they make provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. It is true God oftentimes brings light out of this darkness and turn things to a better issue, or tur turns things to a better issue. After it may be a man hath studied sundry years with an eye upon his lusts, his ambition, pride, and vainglory, rising early and going to bed late, to give them satisfaction. God comes with, God comes in with his grace, turns the soul to himself, robs those Egyptian lusts, and so consecrates that to the use of the tabernacle which was provided for idols. Men may be thus entangled in better things than learning, even in the profession of piety, in their labour, in the ministry, and, and, the, and the like. Some men's profession is a snare to them. They are in reputation and are much honoured on the account of their profession and strict walking. This often falls out in the days wherein we live, wherein all things are carried by parties. Some find themselves on the accounts mentioned perhaps to be the darlings and ingentia decora of or glory of their party. If thoughts hereof secretly insinuate themselves into their hearts and influence them, into more than ordinary diligence and activity in their way and profession, they are entangled. And instead of aiming at more glory, had need lie in the dust, in a sense of their own vileness. And so close is this temptation that oftentimes it requires no food to feed upon, but that he who is entangled with it to avoid all means and ways of honour and reputation so that it can but whisper in the heart 
that that avoidance is honourable. The same may be the condition with men, as was said, in preaching the gospel in the work of the ministry. Many things in that work may yield them esteem, their ability, their plainness, their frequency, their success, and all in this sense may be fuel unto temptations. Let then a man know that when he likes that which he which feeds his lust, and keeps it up by ways either good in themselves or not downright sinful, he is entered into temptation. End quote. Well, there's so much in that to apply, isn't there, brothers and sisters? Um, we often think of temptation as being something to do with lust in the in the moral sense. Well, here it's lust in the in the spiritual, ministerial or reputational sense, a much more devious, a much more, uh, yeah, devious, I think is the word, uh, sort of temptation than the obvious type of uh, uh, thing. So may God help us and deliver us from uh, these things. I, I was thinking of this, especially in the context of in a day that we live where preachers and so on have so much prominence and are given so much praise the danger for them that is that is indeed heaped upon them by those who surround them treating them like pop stars and so on we have to be so careful and as as owen says better for us to to uh, uh, lie in the dust um, and confess our vileness than to experience uh, such temptations and to give in to such temptations well may the lord help us and may the lord grant to us uh, deliverance from these things um, in his name amen